Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please go ahead and click on subscribe and also click on that bell to receive all the updates and activities on my channel. All right, so I fear I'd make this video because we're getting into the season and this question is gonna come up quite a bit in the, uh, in the miscellaneous forums and Facebook pages and everything else. And it, the question is, my sled won't start. Why won't it start, right? And if you have a no start condition, it's either one of three things. It's either compression, which is pretty easy to check, it's fuel, or it's spark, right? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go through all the basic troubleshooting steps that you can do uh, in, in your garage with pretty much no tools, and uh, all you need is a couple of set of hands, and a flashlight, and some good eyeballs, and you can pretty much troubleshoot what your issue is uh, as far as one of those three conditions. As far as fixing it, that's another issue. But what we'll do is, We'll go through all the common issues with these Polaris and D wedges that will cause a no start condition. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, so one of the first things you wanna check, honestly, is do you have gas in, in, in the tank? Um, sometimes what will happen is those, uh, those floats will break and it'll actually will give you a false indication of actually how much gas is in the tank. So uh, just if you want, you can, and you can uh, grab a stick stick it in the tank and actually check for the presence of uh, fuel in the tank. Um, if you have the, uh, the rear elevated, what you have to remember is if you don't have a lot of gas in the tank, all the fuel is going to come forward in the tank and uh, you know the pickup is towards the rear and what will happen is you may not have enough fuel in the tank to, so that the pickup is actually in the, in the fuel you may be sucking uh, in air. Another thing you want to check is the uh, the presence of the pickup line. And all you want to do is just grab a hook, stick it in the tank, and if you're lucky, right, there is the pickup line. So what you can do is you can uh, pick up the line all the way up out of the neck. Make sure the, that the, uh, the uh, check valve or the pre-screen is actually still attached and make sure this is still attached to the uh, the uh, the nipple on the front of the tank make sure that's not floating in the tank as, as well because typically uh, what will happen is the pickup line will rot and um, you won't get any gas at the carbs all right so once you establish that you have gas in the tank um, and your pickup line is good check and make sure you actually have your uh, fuel shutoff uh, on um, sometimes this is easy to uh, uh, to miss. You actually may have it off, right? Another thing to check is, you know, as you're as you're pulling, pulling, pulling. If you don't think you're getting any gas, just take the line off the the fuel shut off and see if it's wet and see if you have any gas coming to the uh, the shut off, right? And then another thing you can do is, so you can get you in here. Take one of the uh, the fuel lines, go into the carbs, pull that off. Make sure it's wet as well. Make sure you're getting gas to the carbs and check all three of them, right? Because if you're not getting any gas um, out of the uh, the fuel shutoff, those will be dry. And again, that's a, a, a common uh, issue. You're not getting gas to the carbs. So check for check for the presence of fuel on both sides of the fuel shutoff. Okay, so another fuel related issue is you could have a failed fuel pump, right? So on the Ultra, the fuel pump is uh, attached to the plate. So what you can do is, uh, if you suspect a overfueling issue and you think it's the, the fuel pump, just go ahead and separate it from the fuel pump, the line that is, and this is the pulse line. And if you, after you separate it, if you have any moisture or any fluid in there or any gas in here, um, that signifies you, that you have either a ruptured fuel pump or you have gas leaking past the needles and seats. But if everything is perfect, this should be perfectly dry. You should never have any moisture in that. And this is a quick, easy way to check. Just pull it off and you can check that real quick in about five seconds. All right, so at this point, you've confirmed that you have gas in the tank, you, you have gas up to the fuel shutoff, and you have gas up to the carbs. Now you may have a overfueling condition. Um, Typically what happens on these older players with the uh, Makuni round slides, the needles and seats will leak. And if you didn't turn the fuel off before you stored it, it's very possible that you may have a crankcase full of gas, right? And if that's the case, 
The easiest way to check is take the plugs out and hold the throttle wide open, pull it over, and see if you have gas coming out of the other cylinders. If you do, you have a couple options. Um, you can keep pulling, 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 and you'll look like Or another option is on the bottom of the engine, depending on if it's a triple or a twin, you're going to drain. So there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there, right? And those correspond to the individual cylinders. In the, in the event that you have an overfueling condition, you can open up these drains and let all the fuel come out of the crankcase, and then you can start from square one. I will tell you, uh, these are easier, it's easier said than done when the engine's in the, uh, in the sled because these are not the most successful things to get at because typically they're either they're blocked by the bulkhead or the, or the exhaust or whatever. Uh, if you do take these out, make sure you have them, uh, some extra ones because chances are uh, when you take them out, you're going to drop it and it's going to slide underneath the engine never to be seen again. So make sure you have a couple of these on hand in the event that you drop them. Another reason for a overfueling issue other than the needles and seats, a ruptured diaphragm and a fuel pump, uh, the, only left, the only thing that, uh, that can cause it is failed choke plungers, which are right there, right? So there's one on each carb, and what will happen is, say if the sled has been stored for a long time or whatever, uh, these plungers can get stuck, right? So what may happen is you go out here and you, you, know, you flip up the choke and everything, and you're pulling and pulling and pulling, and then you, you put it down and then you're pulling, 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 and nothing happens. So what could happen is as you pull that up, the plungers may get stuck in the bores, which then will cause the engine to flood out, all right? So in the event that that, that happens, the only thing you can do is you gotta pull the carbs off, and you're gonna be doing that anyway because you should be cleaning them, And uh, but uh, stuck plungers can cause an overfueling issue as well. All right, another thing to check is, do you have compression? Do you have compression in all three cylinders? Uh, if you have a compression gauge, that's fine. Some people don't, that's fine too. An easy uh, way to check it is take the plugs out and you do them on all three, stick your finger in the hole and while somebody is uh, um, pulling it over and if you have enough compression, uh, it should blow your finger out of the hole, right? No jokes. <laughs> all right, do that on, on all three and if you want, you can put your thumb on it or whatever, but um, typically if you have 90, Anything over 90, um, it'll have enough compression to blow your finger out of the hole, and that'll be a good way to check. Okay, so you confirmed you have fuel and you have compression, right? Doing your basic tests. Next thing you wanna do is, do you have spark, right? So the easiest thing to do is, if you're in a garage like this, go ahead and pull, three pl pull all the plugs out and um, elevate the, uh, the rear, right? And then turn the lights off and then just ground them out and against the uh, the head and start pulling it over right and um, you should have, you should be able to see spark on all, on all three right if you don't have spark at all check to make sure your kill switch is up people do tend to forget about that and make sure your key switch is on right if you've confirmed that both of those are in the correct position and you still don't have spark uh, you can do this and before you do this, make sure you elevate the back of the sled to make sure you get it off the ground. Because the next step I'm going to show you, um, in, the, in the event that this thing does fire up after you've been pulling it and pulling and pulling it, this uh, the machine has the potential of taking off on you, right? All right, so what I mean is on these uh, player city wedges, um, all the uh, ignition system can be overridden by a single wire, right? And once you override that, um, the sled will start, but you will, you will have no way to stop it, right? Um, and the only way you'll stop it is you can turn the gas off or pull all the, uh, the uh, plug wires off the plugs, right? So again, if this thing starts and you're not prepared for it, say you have a fueling issue where the, uh, your throttle cables are not set, this thing can take off and it can cause some damage or it can kill somebody. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you, on these Polaris sleds, there is a single wire right there, right by that bullet connector. If you unplug that, that's gonna cancel out the key switch and the, uh, 
the uh, the kill switch, and you will have spark on that, right? If you don't have spark, at that point, you have an issue either with the stator or your coils, right? Another thing to check is make sure all your wiring is plugged in, uh, the stator, right? Make sure you, all your cables, are, all your electrical is plugged in, and if those are loose, uh, you won't have you won't have spark, right? So check those. Check all your coil connections as well. Make sure that nothing's gotten to those as well. All right, so another element that may cause a no spark condition is the spark plugs themselves. Sometimes these, pl these uh, plugs will go bad. They may be fouled out. So if this is the start of the season, do yourself a sp uh, favor. Spend the 10 bucks. Go get three or two plugs or whatever it is and just put them in there and eliminate, out eliminate that out of the equation just so you have a better chance of... Uh, success right sometimes you may have bad uh, plug wires or bad uh, spark plug caps on some uh, not on the ultra they can be replaced um, like on the Fuji's what you can do is or the Fuji twins um, you can actually s snip off the wire buy a new cap for like two or three bucks screw it on there and then um, um, that'll clean it up sometimes the cap may be no good so go ahead and take a look at that Okay, so you've done all your checks, you've made sure you got spark, fuel, and compression, and everything else, and this is what you want. You want this thing to start on the, on the first pull every time. Uh, this thing is, is completely cold, it hasn't been started in probably about a week, week and a half, and uh, if everything's good, this is what you want. Kill switch is up, key is on. And there you go. That's what everybody wants when they go out there, start their sled for the first time this season. They want instant results and instant gratification. All right, I hope this helps everybody out. If there's any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.